In this lesson, I will expose a list of employee data from a hosted SAP environment using the SAP function module called BAPI underscore employee underscore get data. For the sake of saving some time, we are only going to expose a single method to list some basic employee data, then use that method in a K2 smart form. I'll begin with K2 Connect Administration Console already open because I do need to set up an SAP destination in K2 Connect that points to my SAP instance. Your environment may already have a destination configured for you, so feel free to skip ahead if necessary. In this tool, select Settings from the General Menu section over here on the left. When that window opens up, we can go into the Configure Destinations area to begin setting up the new destination. I am starting this with a connector already defined called ERP Connect. Now, this may be named differently in your environment. However, I do need to create a system grouping that names my SAP system. I'll right click on ERP Connect, go into Systems, and click Add. For this system, I'll just name it SAP and click OK to save it. Next, right click on the new system node, go into Destinations, then select the option to add. From the K2 Connect destination screen, I'll enter the following settings. For name, I'm going to call this destination K2 Learning SAP. Then for description, I'll just enter in SAP Learning Environment. I'll also add in my connection string, which is a fairly common configuration. So I'll take the assumption here that you know what you need in this setting to connect to your own environment. Be sure to configure this according to your own security standards within your organization, and that's in terms of including a static username and password within this connection string. After clicking OK, you will see a prompt asking if you want to test the connection. Go ahead and click Yes here. On the Login to Destination screen, note, if you happen to include a username and password within your connection string, as I just mentioned, you can put a check in the box next to predefined user credentials here to tell K2 to use that instead. However, because I did not do that in my case, I'll enter in my credentials for this demo, then click OK to launch the test. That looks good, so I'll close this dialog window out. One last thing I'm going to do is right click K2 Learning SAP and select Set as Default Destination. Then close the K2 Connect Destination Explorer window and the K2 Connect Server Configuration screen. What I just did with this step is open my SAP environment in K2 Connect. This in turn allows me to access SAP BAPI function definitions in Visual Studio that can be used to create K2 service instances and smart objects. Before I go over to Visual Studio, I also need to register a service instance that points to my SAP environment based on the settings I just laid out. In the Administration tool, I'll go into the K2 Settings menu this time, here on the left. For this example, I'm going to set up static credentials. However, be sure to follow your organization's security requirements when registering SAP service instances in your own K2 environment. Upon entering the username and password, I'll click on the Register Service Instance link here at the bottom of this window. That should do it. It should use the default destination that we set up. I'll click OK on the Successfully Registered window, then click OK once more, and we can close the administration tool. And just to demonstrate, I'll bring up the K2 management site briefly and go into the Service Instances option under the Integration menu group. Refresh, and now we can see the K2 Connect service instance. Next, I'm going to switch over to Visual Studio to set up a K2 project that will define a service object and also let me deploy a smart object based off of the function that I want to call for employee data over an SAP. In Visual Studio, I'll create a new project from the File menu in the upper left. We need to go into the K2 Project Templates group and select K2 Empty Project. I'll give this project the name K2 Connect Test, then click OK. Note this may take a few seconds to open up depending on your environment that you're developing in. In the Solution Explorer, add a new K2 Connect service object to the project. 
Do this by right-clicking the K2 Connect Test Project, then select Add, New Item. When the Add New Item screen opens, select K2 Connect Service Object from the installed templates. I'm going to name my service object K2 Connect Imp Data. Note there are a few limitations on the naming of service objects. I won't go into all the details for this, but you may want to consult product documentation if you have questions on formatting restrictions for naming service objects in your environment. I'll click Add to save this option and get started. Next, from the Visual Studio View ribbon tab, select K2 Service Object Designer if it's not open in your environment already. We need to open this up to get down into the K2 Learning SAP destination to find the BAPI function for employee information. In the K2 Service Object Designer tree, I'll expand the ERP Connect node down into the K2 Learning SAP destination that I just created so that it is visible. If you're following along in your own environment, you may be prompted for credentials here as you were when you tested the destination connection back on step one. If your username and password was embedded in your connection string, you can put a check in the option to use predefined user credentials. In my case, I'll enter my credentials in, then click OK to continue. From here, I'm going to browse down into the get list method under Business Objects, Application Components. I'll open up Personnel Management, then Personnel Administration, and Employee. And here we have the Methods group. In this area, we can see the get list method called BAPI underscore employee underscore get data. Let's test this out to make sure it works first by right clicking the get list method then click K2 Connect Test Cockpit. Inside the testing tool, click Load Interface. This option will load both the input parameters and output results panes. You need to provide input parameters here so that only specific results are returned. I'll click the Clear All option in the input pane. Then I'll select specific input properties instead of all of them here. I want to put a check in the box for the date. And I'm good with the current date showing as the default value. Next, I'm going to scroll down and put a check in the box for the option called last name underscore M. I'm going to enter in a wildcard type search here. So I'll enter in a capital A with an asterisk as the parameter value and click execute. When this method completes, click the Show Details link for the Personal Data Table Return option in the Output pane. You should see a table with results returned like this. If there are no results, return to the Input pane and confirm that you have put checks in all the boxes for inputs that you are passing in. Also be sure that parameter values are being entered. This looks good for now, so I'll close the K2 Connect Test Cockpit so that we can design our service object next. From inside the K2 Service Object Designer area, drag the GetList method onto the K2 Service Object Designer canvas. To configure the properties we want, hover over and click the GetList link to open the function interface screen. Then select the Clear All link to clear the pre-selected properties. I'm just going to select the following properties, date, last name underscore M, personal underscore data, and the return property, which is still selected by default. For the personal data property, I do need to also drill down into this table structure to demonstrate how you can expose the properties of results list tables like this. So I'll select the personal data table to highlight it. Notice that the show structure option appears in the upper right corner of the pane. We can click that button. I'll select Clear All again here in the Structure Declaration pane to clear the default property selections. Just as I did previously, I'll also put a check in the following properties so that only they are included with the Personal Data List table when it is returned. I'm going to select Birth Date, First Name, Gender, Last Name, National, and the Perno field. Let's click the Go Back link in the upper right corner of the Service 1 pane to complete this configuration of the GetList method. 
and I'll save this K2Connect service object. Next, I want to auto-generate a smart object from this service object. To get that going, we can click the K2 settings button located in the K2 service object designer toolbar. Here, we can ensure that the box to generate smart object has a check in it. Also confirm that the option to use properties as parameters is unchecked for this case. Then click register service instance as well and close this dialog window out. Next, we can click the link called Publish Service Object in the upper right corner to deploy this new service object to the K2 server. This may take a few seconds when you first run this option. Because I selected the Generate Smart Object option, K2 is automatically going to update the underlying service instance and generate a new K2 Smart Object. Notice that we get a confirmation that the Smart Object was generated. I'll close this out save the project, and also close Visual Studio so that I can move on and test my smart object from inside the K2 management site. I have a browser opened up to the K2 management site here on my screen. When this SAP smart object was published, it was stored in the category structure called K2 Connect Test. So let's open that first, and select a K2 Connect Imp Data Smart Object. From the area on the right side here, notice that we have properties available based on what we selected back in Visual Studio when designing this smart object. To execute this method, I'll select Get List from the Methods section of the page. Then I'll click the Execute button in the menu bar just above the method. On this next window, I'm just going to enter values for the input parameters P underscore date and P underscore last name underscore M. I'll enter today's date and put the capital letter A with an asterisk for last name. This will give us a wildcard-like search on last name starting with the letter A. I'll click Execute. Notice that we have a listing of employee details here from SAP. Let's move on now to look at how I can get this information into a K2 smart form. Now, I already have K2 Designer open in my browser as well, so let's get started. I'll have to click Browse to go over to the K2 category structure and find the new SAP Base Smart Object that I just published. From the All Items category, I'll expand and locate the K2 Connect Imp Data Smart Object that's living in the K2 Connect Test category. We can just generate a view for this smart object by right-clicking the smart object named K2 Connect Imp Data and select Generate Views. On this window that pops up, I'll select the List checkbox and then leave the other defaults as they are. I'm just going to work with a view in this demonstration and leave the form component out of it for now. I'll click OK to create the new list view. To edit this new view component, I'm going to right click and select edit on the view in the category K2 Connect Test. What I'm basically going to do is go into the rules tab for this view and add some filter values into the call to the smart object get list method when the view initializes. From the rules tab at the top of the page, I'll edit the rule called when the view executed initialize. Next, click on the configure link and notice that I have access to plug-in values for the SAP method parameters of date and last name. For date, I'll open up the system values group over here on the right in the context browser and drag over the current date placeholder. For last name, again, I'll enter in an A capital with an asterisk. That's all I'm going to do here, so I'll click Finish then OK to close the Rule Designer window and finish editing the view. With this view still selected in the Category menu, I'll open up the view with its runtime URL to launch the new view and test the GetList method. Here you can see a list of employee data that has been returned from the SAP destination that I configured earlier in the demonstration. 
Now going on from here, we can include this view in smart forms used throughout workflows and other applications as needed.